Greetings world. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. The Calgary police are back in the news again this week. First with a CPS recruit having her duty bag stolen from her personal truck. The bag contained handcuffs and keys, a set of soft body armor, a locked case that held an inert non-functioning 40 caliber handgun and three 15 round magazines, as well as a duty belt, flashlight and baton but no live ammunition was taken. The inert Glock's size and weight is similar to that of a functional weapon and is only available to law enforcement for training recruits. Something like this happened in Calgary last year also when an off-duty police officer left his gun in his safe in the back seat of his personal car while he was parked in a parking lot and it got stolen. I didn't think that they were allowed to take their weapons home with them. If they are allowed there should be a law that they have to transport it straight home at first and then it stays at their home until it needs to be transported back to work. Meaning no stopping elsewhere first. Otherwise they should get a charge for doing this. Another case they are in the news for is for a family of a preschooler that was fatally struck by a truck in bonus is suing the Calgary Police Service for releasing incorrect information into the death of their four-year-old daughter back in May 2016. They are seeking more than $600,000 in damages. According to the allegations outlined in the statement of claim filed, members of the Calgary Police Service divulged inaccurate information to the media in connection with the fatal collision. The unconfirmed witness account that was shared allegedly damaged the family's reputation and contributed to the dropping of charges against the driver who struck the girl. The statement of claim names the chief, a staff sergeant, and the Calgary Police Service as defendants. In the evening hours of May 6, 2016, the family was returning to their home after spending time near the river. The four-year-old was crossing the street at the intersection when she was struck by a Ford F-150. In the hours following the crash police indicated in a release that the suspect vehicle had stopped prior to the collision and that one of the girl's parents had waved the truck through the intersection in the moments before the crash. Back in October 2017, the Calgary Police Service apologized to the family and issued a retraction to their initial release. CPS officials stated the witness account that was shared with the media was released without verification. In their statement of claim the family referred to the Calgary Police Service statements from May 2016 to the press resulted in hatred, ridicule and contempt towards the family. The statement of claim says the alleged falsehoods released by the CPS were included in the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner's report into the four-year-old's death and as a further result of said negligence. The driver was not convicted of charges. The driver of the Ford F-150 was charged with careless driving and operating an uninsured motor vehicle. The charges were dropped in October 2017 due to conflicting testimony. The same time that the Calgary Police Service issued the apology. The family are seeking a correction of their daughter's report of death. $250,000 in damages for the publication of libelous content and false statements. $200,000 each for the aggravation of post-traumatic stress disorder and 150,000 in aggravated and punitive damages. My question is, why would they release anything first without proper and bulletproof verification first? And having hatred and ridicule a family like that, especially during a time like that should have major consequences at the time for their actions. But instead they ended up getting this huge lawsuit instead of correcting the issue at the time. They probably seen that as an okay thing to do at the time because in their eyes they are not doing anything wrong. 
with the medical examiner even getting the permission or false statements to put into the report of death should have even led to disciplinary actions at the time. You can clearly see the cause of death was caused from a truck hitting the four-year-old while she was crossing the street. Not as a result of said negligence like the medical examiner stated. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.